Project Studio in Beit Shemesh, Israel. Hope you guys are doing great. It is uh, approximately 3.38 in New York on the East Coast. Uh, and uh, yes, we're getting messages that we are live. Um, happy Rosh Chodesh Adar, everybody. As I have my Rosh Chodesh Adar, the new moon of Adar special <laughs> outfit. You see, because today is the day that we have to be happy. We start. This is the month of extra happiness. Extra, extra happiness. And um, so we hope that it will come true and we will all have a great month, followed by a month of redemption. That is the month of Nisan. So we have first Adar, Adar, extra happiness, followed by the month of redemption, the month of Nisan, which of course is Pesach. So this month is Purim. Next month is Pesach. Fantastic. It's going to be a fantastic two months, hopefully parlaying that. You like that word, parlay? Parlaying that into more and more happiness and redemption. Happiness, redemption. Happiness, redemption. That's where we're going. And um, today I am wearing my cowboy hat that I got presented to in Calgary when I did a show in Calgary by the Cates family and the community of Calgary. They brought me out to do a concert, and on stage, they gave me this great cowboy hat. And uh, the shirt, I got three really wild shirts at a going out of business sale in Manhattan a long time ago, and so this is one of them. And it makes you dizzy to look at it. I could hypnotize you. Take a look, take a look. You're getting sleepier, sleepier. Only joking. Anyway, here we go. All right. We're going to get ourselves in trouble. Today is... <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Name that too. No, there's not... Uh... Trying to understand the message, not getting the message. Name that tune. Last May you had a rotten month, so what is there to say? Last May? Well, we're in February. We're in the month of the month of Adar, everybody. It's the month of Adar. And there's no such thing as a rotten month, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Because we learn that everything that God does is for the best, even though it might not seem like it is. But we're all of a sudden, I'm getting into philosophy. Now, today is a schlock rock, Lenny Solomon, show number 83, question and answer. It's question and answer number six. Question and answer session number six. And I believe it or not, um, I got questions sent to me from all over the world. Amazing questions, which we will go into. Um all right, and we just got a seventh question. We just say a shout out to uh, to Judy Hertzfeld, our associate producer. A shout out to Esther, and uh, who's who's ch chiming in here on our chat room that I'm seeing. I don't see the Facebook things. I don't think I I see only the YouTube comments. Um, anyway, so this show, of course, is brought to you by www.fourcornersproject.org. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And the show is also sponsored by the Kosher Cakery. Wait, let's get that caption up. Koshercakery.com. We'll tell you all about that in the middle of our session two. But right now, let's go back to the other caption. And let's start with question number one. Question number one comes from DA from Beit Shemesh. And she writes, what is your favorite part about being a musician? And how old were you when you wrote your first song or composed music? Okay, great question. Um, my favorite part about being a musician is meeting and, and developing relationships with people from all over the world. Obviously, playing music is, is the best. But in terms of the, the part that I love is people. I am a people person. And that's one of the things that makes this corona thing so difficult is that... Um, you know, the the Corona things. You you don't you you know. I'm stuck here in uh, no touring. There's no touring. Everything. All my touring is virtual. Three shows a week. 
And if it wasn't for those three shows, I don't know what I would do because you, I really, at least I'm interacting with you guys online, you know? Um, so, you know, that's the thing. So the, my favorite part about being a musician is the band and the relationships with the band and the people that I meet all over the world. How old was I when I wrote my first song? I was 13. Um, I wrote this song when I was 13, and it took me until this past year to put words to it. It's very interesting. It's going to come out on a Hebrew album that I'm going to release at some point in the next year or so. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. I wrote it when I was 13 years old, and I, I uh, was in eighth grade. I remember writing it, and uh, I still remember the song. So it's actually the words that we use, are, I put to it as Tzur Michelo. And it'll be a uh, it'll be recorded in the next year or so, so you'll hear it. Okay, question number two. Let's head over to question number two. This comes from Rabbi Gedalia Levin from Melbourne, Australia. All right, we have a lot of fans in Melbourne, Australia. I've been there eight times, and I've been to the community of South Africa nine times. Both great, great, great communities. All right, so here's the question. Was there any song of yours that you thought would go far, but it didn't? That's question number one. That's, that's two. question number A, part A. And part B is, was there a song that you didn't think would be popular, but it surprised you and went far? So let me answer the second half first. Achash Veirosh is a song that I had absolutely no idea would become as big as it did. I'm not sure I could say the same about Minion Man. Minion Man, um, I knew it was a good song. I didn't know it would become, you know, legendary because it's a legendary song. Uh, so, so that will answer the second half. Now, what about question number one? Yes. So, so the question, the first part of the question was: there any song that I thought would go far that didn't? The answer is I don't have a specific song that I thought would go far, but I did think albums would do better than they did for instance the album manual for the moral minded which was an entire album on pirkei avot on ethics of the fathers that i really really loved um didn't do well and i and i uh had to understand why you know what was the problem was there a problem with the writing was there a problem with anything in general and you know you don't really know because you see the truth is as as i'm as i was explaining before you know Hashem really is the one um, leading this career. Hashem is, God is, is, is leading the way. So there are some albums where, you know, for instance, Sergeant Schlocker's Magical History Tour to Unite Old Jews, they were, they were, they were albums that just blew people away. Schlockrock almost on Broadway. Oh, my gosh. I mean, unbelievable. Um, and then there were songs that... So I, I really thought the song Ani Yehudi would be very, very big, and it was. What about the album of Shabbat in Liverpool? That album I thought would be also would be fantastic, and it was. So there are some albums that you say, ah, oh, this is unbelievable, and it, and it hits. And there are other albums that take some time. You know, uh, here's a question coming from Naharia and my friend Natana. She writes, when and where will Schlock Rock perform next? All right, let me just, I have no idea because who knows? <laughs> I do know that, um, you know, I'm doing a couple of, I'm doing a private thing on Purim in a yeshiva here, but that's not a concert. Um, I, I think we're coming out of this thing, but it, I, I don't anticipate touring until, at the earliest this summer and at the latest next Hanukkah. And believe me, uh, I'm itching to to tour and do concerts in front of people. So, as well as in Israel, to do shows in Israel, of course. I don't know, um, I don't know though when that will happen next. Um, all right, so that was question number three. And let us go on ah this is a this is a very good question this is a nice question coming from maureen in chicago and she writes was there ever a song that you really wanted to parody but you couldn't 
Yes. There are a lot of songs that I wanted to parody, but I couldn't. Hotel California. Love that song. Don't really know what to say about it. I mean, I had an idea. So, like, um, I had... Welcome to the Kotel Ma'aravi. Dun, 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 dun. Kotel Ma'aravi is the Western Wall. But I never really, never really finished it. Um, what else? What else would I like to do that I didn't do? So people always say you have to do American Pie too long. I never, <laughs> it never just didn't happen. Um, uh, let's see if there was anything else that I really, really, really wanted to parody that I that I wanted to schlock that I couldn't do it. All right, so I have been trying to schlock this Eagles tune called Already Gone. It's a great song with a tremendous guitar solo. I have never been able to figure out what to write for it. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Other times, boom, it pops into your head. Yes, I know. So very good. I'm, Esther tells me Gershon Varoba did Hotel California. He actually did Pesach in a hotel in California. Yes, I know that. But I wanted to schlock my own version. I just never got anywhere where I, where I thought I could finish the song. But the Eagles song, Already Gone, love that song. Never schlocked it. Um, we'll see. We'll see if I ever do. Because the next parody album that comes out is going to be a classic rock, schlock rock parody album, meaning music from the 70s and 80s. Uh, that I missed, you know, on the first go round. So we're going to do it this time. It'll be great. It's going to be a fantastic album. That's one of the things I hope to do this year. But we got to be funded, you guys. We got to be funded. All right. Um, we'll talk about that. Let's take a break from our questions and do our sponsor. Yes. Here we go. Captions and koshercakery.com. Here we go. Let's read the. We have to read the. Um, there we go. Where is it? Where is it? Right. So this portion of Letting Solomon Live is brought to you by Kosher Cakery. Kosher Cakery is a boutique bakery that makes the best stuff. Take it from me. I've had it. It's fantastic. So if you need to send cakes, cupcakes, cookies to people here in Israel, go to koshercakery.com and place your order now. Devora and her staff will take care of you and make sure everything is perfect. Kosher Cakery, that's my bakery. Koshercakery.com sponsors this portion of the question and answer session on Lenny Solomon Live. And anybody out there, if you want to get your business sponsored, feel free. Feel free to get in touch with me and we will plug your business. Okay, so we had, so far we had four or five questions. We have three or four more left. And then we're going to call it a night. So let's go to, um, we're starting to get into some heavy philosophical stuff. But first, some more music. What advice would you give someone who wants to get into Jewish music now? That's the first question. Okay, so I got to tell you something. The first thing that Rabbi Gedalia Levin from Melbourne told me is that I've been saying that Schlockrock is 34 years old. In truth, Schlockrock turned 35 this January, the month of January. We started off January 26th, 1986, I think, was our first release. Learning is Good came out at the end of January 1986. So we are 35 years old now. Unbelievable. Never thought that would happen. And that kind of brings us to this question. What advice would you give someone who wants to get into Jewish music now, as opposed to when I got in? In 1986, there were two ways to get into Jewish music. One was you picked up your cassettes or your CDs. There were no CDs back then for me, just cassettes. You picked up your cassettes, you went from city to city, you performed, you sold your cassettes, and you moved on to the next city, and you developed a following. You developed a following nationwide, and um, that's what I did. And that meant Australia, that meant South Africa, that meant England, that meant Canada, Mexico, all of the United States. By the time 2014 came around, we played our 50th state in May on Lagba Omer. In May 2014, we played our 50th state, and we are the only band to play all 50 U.S. states, Jewish band anyway, maybe even Jewish Music Act. Um, but it, it, that's, you know, that was a lot of fun. So what advice now? What, okay. So that's one way you make it by, by doing a lot of shows. You got to hustle. You got to get your shows. You got to work for very little in the beginning and you, and then you 
work on your show, you you perfect it, you work on dealing with people and and interacting, and then the second way you make it big is a lot of money. If you have a lot of money and you can put it into advertising, we never had that. Schlockrock never had that. We just it was word of mouth. And I went from city to city. But if you have a lot of money and you can target audiences and put in, you know, make a demographic and made a business plan, and that's what I think what makes Schlockrock so special is that Hashem was really the the manager of this band. He he would say, okay, now you're going here, now you're going there. Phone rings off the hook. Okay, now you're going to Seattle, you're going to Vancouver, you're going to, to Toledo, you're going to Birmingham, Alabama, you're going to Omaha, Nebraska, you're going to St. Louis, Chicago, and so on and so on and so on and and. That's how it happened. It was really not planned by me. Uh, and and so if you want to get into Jewish music now, so the first thing you got to do is you got to want to be in music. You have to be able to play an instrument or sing and have a band with you. Um, you have to want it really badly. You want to tour. A lot of the groups that I was around with in, in the 80s, they didn't tour. We toured. We went everywhere. We played Anchorage, Alaska. I remember 1990 going to Anchorage, Alaska. It was just fantastic. Um, and, and the guys in the band also, they loved touring. And Eitan G loves touring. And Gary Wallen loved touring. And Yona Lloyd and Danny Block and Mark Infield, Mark Skyer, Dave Hirsch, Roy Weinberger, and so on and so on and so on. All the guys, Rami Strasberg, Chucky Epstein. It was the best. The, you can't even imagine what it's like. It's just... It's just so much fun. Um, now, is it for everybody? No. And you have sleepless nights? Yes. And do you have to get up very, very early in the morning to make a flight a lot of the times? Yes. And, you know, things happen. Sometimes equipment gets lost. Sometimes the equipment doesn't work. Sometimes you're playing with musicians in a city and and they don't know your material and you you it's hard. But But you get by and you get through it and it's a lot of fun. All right, the second part of that question, what advice would you give someone who wants to do outreach with music? Ah, great question. So I, believe it or not, I never wanted to do outreach per se. I just was myself. And myself is observant Judaism and making Jewish Judaism fun. I didn't try. I just was myself. And that's what I would tell people. If you, wanted, if you want, you know, people to get inspired, just be yourself. Be write who you are write what you are and hopefully you will you know uh you know affect people and they'll say you know what makes sense i'm going to do more learning i'm proud of who i am I'm, i'll learn more about my heritage so that's what i would say i would say don't try to preach just be just be yourself and you know um yes yeah, so did you play Congregation Beth Israel in Worcester, Massachusetts in 1986? No. The first Schlockrock concert Schlockrock ever had was in December 1987. September 87 in Toronto and in Montreal. September 6, September 12, 1987. We never played Worcester in 86. We did play Worcester. And we did play Congregation Beth Israel. But it was, it was later. It was in the 90s. Um, yeah. Now, the band before Schlockrock, which was Kesher, I don't believe we played Worcester. I think we played Boston. I don't think we played Worcester. But I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to the next question. Here we go. We're getting into the heavy philosophical questions right now. Um, okay, those two. We did that one. Oh, this is a good one. This is from Amy from Montreal, and she writes, How do you stay besimcha? That means with happy. How do you stay happy so much and continue to inspire us with your music so many years, even at this most difficult time? And then she writes, I have to tell you, I got the YouTube music app, and since I've listened to some albums of Schlockrock that I hadn't previously heard so much, and I think the rock and roll helps overall health and well-being. So the answer is yes. Music is is essential. And and I always tell people, in order to whatever music makes you happy, you should be playing it because you need to always be happy. Bef I, whenever I play to go to a gig in Israel, I always would play the song "Feels So Good" from Chuck Mangione. It's an instrumental, nine-minute instrumental. 
uh, that was on the radio. Great song. It makes you feel so good. It makes me feel so good. I also love the Eagles. Obviously, I love Billy Joel. Do I love Hebrew music? Yes, I do. Of course I do. But um, there are certain grooves and, and chordal structures that that I really, really love. Um, but she asks, how do you stay happy so much? So the answer is I'm not always so happy. Sometimes I'm depressed. <laughs> but when I play, and there's a hello to Yaakov Walk, um, when I play, it, it, when I perform, I get this energy, and it just changes you. You become fun. And so I don't know, I, you know, but it's very, very important to be happy because if you're not happy, you know, they say that God doesn't, it, he's not going to, to give you great inspiration if you're sad, you know. Uh, he, when, as long as Jacob was sad, God never appeared to him. Jacob was in mourning for Joseph. So I, you know, it's very important to try to be happy. And I, you know, thank God I, I'm able to do that. Um, but I don't want to be tested, you know, about the, let's just stay the, stay the course <laughs> for those of you out there who know what I'm talking about, you know, Corona has been a tough time for us, especially as a musician brings us to the last question of the day. What are we, this is from Lauren in Jerusalem and she writes, what are we Jews meant to be doing during these trying times? And what does Hashem want from us? Now, <laughs> I'm just a musician. How am I, I mean, how am I going to answer this? But the answer is I can answer it, or at least I can try to answer it. So let's go to the first part of the question. What are we Jews meant to be doing during these trying times? And the answer is, so you have to try to get closer to God. You have to try to treat people nicely. You have to try to um, do chesed, I mean, deeds, acts of kindness to people. There's two types of, of mitzvot, two types of good deeds. One is ben adam lamakom, between man or between woman and God. And the other one is ben adam lachavero, between man or woman and other men and women. Very, very important right now to work on both of them, but especially work on the man personal relationships. Um, I've always used to try as I was, I've been going through life, I'm trying to think, okay, I don't want anybody to hate me. You don't want to, you know, some people say to me, well, who says you can't have enemies? Sometimes people are not going to be happy with you. That's just the way it is. And that's true. Maybe sometimes they won't be happy with you. But I, I'd like to try to make everybody friends. Everybody should be friends. They should be friends with me at least. Um, I try to work on that. Um, but that, so what are we meant to be doing during these trying times? We just got to try to be better and better because it is really tough right now. You know, well, it seems tough. You know, the, all the, the things that are going on in the world. Question number two, what does Hashem want from us now? It's a great question. So my feeling is that, um, that this COVID thing is, is a plague straight from God. And, you know, everybody says, follow the science. And I say, follow God. God is talking to us. He's telling us we, got, we, we have to get better. We have to be better people, you know, I'm talking to myself now. And um, I, I think that as a people, as a community, we, we all need to talk to God and say, God, please take this plague away from us, from the people of Israel and from the entire world immediately and send us Mashiach and send us, um, you know, the Beit HaMikdash, you know, and, and that's what has to happen. Um, will, will it work? Are we going to have more tough times? I don't know. I can't answer that. And, um, I'm, you know, when I say that Adar brings Simcha, that's just what it says in the Mishnah Bura. It says, Misha Nichnas. There's two things it says in the Mishnah Bura that I could tell you. It says, Misha Nichnas Adar Marbim is Simcha, right? When the month of Adar comes in, we have abundance of Simcha, of happiness. Misha Nichnas Av, when the month of Av comes in, Mema'atin is Simcha. We, the simcha is lessened. So we know for sure those two things. So therefore, if that's the case, 
Well, this is the month of happiness. Let's do it. Let's be happy. Let's have simcha. Let's hopefully see some big miracles. Big miracles. Big, great things. It can happen. It can happen. Daniel and Babylon can get funded. The Four Corners Project can get funded. Those are smaller miracles. Uh, bigger miracles we could have. Don't stop at Daniel and Babylon. Let's go for <laughs> the next musical that I'm going to write, which I still haven't decided what that's going to be. So I want to tell everybody that if you're watching from Facebook, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you're watching from YouTube, either on Schlockrock or Four Corners channel, hit like and subscribe and leave a comment. And if you're watching on Twitter, at Lenny Solomon, retweet it around. I want to... Uh, Everybody out there, Rafu Shleim over Shayna Margalit, Bat Yiris Shainel, Miriam Doni, Bat Chana, Yochevet Aliza, Bat Bat Sheva, Yitzchak Ben Yenta, Shmuel Michael Ben Malka, and Esther Tsipora, Bat Laila. Okay, everybody. Hope you've had a great, great show. We're going to see you on Monday night with show number 84. Next week on Wednesday, the 17th, on Wednesday, the 17th, We've got Roy Weinberger coming into the studio. He holds the record for the most concerts by any drummer played with schlock rock. And we're going to do a, an exploration into his career. He had a great, he has had a great musical career. We're going to learn all about it. Okay, everybody, have a great Shabbat. Have a great Rosh Chodesh Adar. Two days, tomorrow, Friday, tonight, Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, and Shabbat. Starts the month of Adar and let the partying begin. Keep on schlocking. See you Monday night.